Representative Sue Helm of the 104th Legislative District. And today I'm at my senior expo. I'm gonna walk around and talk to the vendors and I'm gonna take you with me as you view it. So we're on our way. Here at the Senior Expo, I'm with Ed Savage from Homeland at Home, which is a good name there. <laughs> yes. And I've always heard good things about the Homeland Center. I know a lot of people have inquired about getting in there at some point of their lives, and I know family members have asked for other family members. But just tell me about your center. Okay, well, Homeland Center uh, was founded in 1867 to care for the widows and orphans of the Civil War. So we have a history in the community, but we're celebrating our 151st year. And over the years, it's changed uh, to meet the growing and evolving health needs of the community. So now we're a continuing care retirement community. Uh, we have 145 residents in personal care, skilled care, and um, our Ellenberger unit, which is Alzheimer's. So we've got different uh, levels of care for different folks. And uh, we like to think that we have a, a, a very home-like setting, and uh, everyone's very friendly, and the care is excellent. Now, if somebody wants to reach you, just tell me, how do they do that? Well, you can visit our website, homelandcenter.org, or you can call 717-221-7900, uh, and um, probably the best person to ask for would be Jennifer Murray. She's in charge of personal care, and she can um, guide folks, and we can have somebody come out and do an assessment on an individual to see what level of care they would need, they would come to their home. And um, we would also encourage people to come by for a tour. We give tours all the time. We're up on uh, North 5th Street, and uh, we are in a building that uh, was built in 1871, um, and the, we've expanded since then. We have a larger, larger facility, um, but the original building is still there, and we're happy to give tours of the facility. So if anyone wants to come by, you're certainly welcome to do so. I would suggest taking a tour. Like, I have been there. I know there's a couple different doors and everything, yeah, yeah. How, where to go in, but um, it is interesting. And just one more thing, like, is it a place like if somebody just needs minor care, they can come there and then as they progress in age, they would be taken care of from there on out? Right, no, thanks for asking. Yeah, um, that is a possibility. So if somebody wants to come in personal care, which is a little bit more like independent living, um, and then you can move into the skilled or the Alzheimer's unit. The other thing too is that uh, respite care is available. So if somebody is um, recovering from an injury uh, or surgery, they can come and, and be with us for you know a couple of weeks or whatever and then go back to their own home. So we're flexible, um, but we do have people who've gone through the continuum where they um, start in personal care and then move into the skilled unit as it would be as it would be necessary. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on our expo today. And there's a lot of people here waiting to ask you questions. Okay, thanks, Sue. Thank you. All right. And now I'm with Bethany Traxler from Homeland at Home Hospice, yes. which is sort of a different branch of the Homeland Center. You, you reach out to people at home, which to me is interesting because until today I didn't realize you did that. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your job and what you do. I am a community liaison, so I go out into the community um, to the nursing facilities, the doctor's offices, senior centers, and I tell people a little bit about our services and what Homeland has to offer. And well, tell me, if I came to you and asked you what would you offer me, what would you offer? We have three outreach services. We have um, Homeland at Home Hospice, Homeland at Home Home Care, and Homeland at Home Home Health. Um, our home care is our private duty service. Um, we come in, we do a little bit of companionship, some ADLs. Um, we can take uh, patients to and from doctor's appointments, to grocery store. Our home health is our physician ordered skilled need where you can receive physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, you receive nursing, um, assistants and also nurses as well. And the big thing with this is people can stay at home where they really want to stay, correct? We strive to keep people in their home um, as long as possible. Now if somebody wants to reach you, do they just call Homeland Center or do you have a different way to reach your area, the hospice area? We um, have a separate number. The number is 717-221-7890 and um, she, they would be connected with the receptionist and they'd be happy to transfer you to the appropriate person. Well, thank you. I know that's so needed in this area. We appreciate what you do. Yes, thank you Thanks. So much. Here at the Senior Expo, I'm with Major James Kisser. 
He's the Assistant Administrator of the Salvation Army. And I'd just like to have you tell us about the Salvation Army. I think we've all heard the name, but do we all know what you do? I'm not sure about that, so tell me. Well, the Salvation Army uh, changes from community to community depending on what's needed. Uh, in, uh, in our area, what, what I'm responsible for is the uh, Lador Lodge and Conference Center. And we offer weeks of senior programming, senior getaways, from April through October. And uh, we, we uh, have about 3,500 seniors come and see us each summer. Uh, we have an indoor heated pool. We have 1,500 acres of uh, undeveloped land. Uh, we have a lodge that, see, that will hold about 150 people. Uh, we offer three meals a day and uh, lots of senior programming, including pontoon boat rides. And it's a tremendous, I can't say enough about it, it's a tremendous place. You know, one of the reasons we have the Senior Expo is to educate the people that come here. And it's amazing, when I come here, I get educated too. That's great. So tell me, do, how much does this cost for people to do this? Well, it's, uh, it depends on how long they come to stay with us. We have three-day packages, we have five-day packages, and we have eight-day packages. Uh, and we also offer scholarships for seniors that are on uh, low-income seniors. Uh, we can offer a full scholarship or a half scholarship, depending on their uh, income level. And that's all spelled out in all of our brochures and materials. And one more thing, if somebody wants to do this, who do they contact? What's the phone number? Or how do they do that? Okay, our uh, sales manager is uh, Kathy Feint, and her telephone number is 570-488-6129, extension 157. And I'll say that again, just in case somebody's trying to write it down. Her name is Kathy. She's our sales director. And her number is 570 488 6129 extension 157. Thank you. And anybody that didn't get that, you can always call one of our offices and we will give you the number again. That's so right. thank you for being here well, and nice uh, to meet you. glad you were telling everybody what Salvation Army does, My including pleasure. me. Thank My you. Pleasure. Thank you. I'm now with Amy Jacobs. We've she's kind of new on this scene. We've talked to her mother for a long, long time before, so we welcome you here today. Thank you. And she's from the Harrisburg Area YMCA Center for Healthy Living. So can you tell me about that? It looks like you're, everybody's here at the Senior Expo asking you. Just tell me what you're talking to them about today. So we're showcasing our free chronic disease prevention programs. We have five currently. We'll be adding two next year. Um, the main areas that we have right now are for cancer survivorship, pre-diabetes, enhanced fitness, which is geared towards um, individuals with arthritis and low impact. And then we have a blood pressure self-monitoring program and a freedom from smoking. So do people have to belong, they belong to the Y, then they come to your programs, that's how it works? or No, all these programs are actually free to the community. So you do not have to be a member to take part of these programs. And then you're, you work out of Harrisburg, but there's other locations in the area that they can also go to? Yes, yeah, so we service our Harrisburg Area YMCA Association branches. That's Northern Dauphin County YMCA, which is in Elizabethville. And then we have the East Shore YMCA, which is right on Front Street in Harrisburg. The West Shore YMCA, which is off Trindle Road in Camp Hill. And the Camp Curtain branch off of 6th Street. Now tell me, if somebody is like, they've recovered from cancer, why would they come to you? So our Live Strong at the YMCA program, it's our cancer survivorship and it's a 12 week long fitness program. So that's where they can come and try and reclaim their health either post treatment or even if they're currently receiving treatment for a cancer diagnosis. I'll throw another subject out. What about arthritis? What about people who are suffering from arthritis? So if they're suffering for arthritis, we have our enhanced fitness class and that's a low impact class designed for individuals with arthritis. Um, it can involve a chair, so like I said, it's for low impact um, so that we can reach those individuals and service their needs. And here it says freedom from smoking, like that's near and dear to my heart because I don't, I never smoke, but I don't like to go anywhere where there's smoke and thank goodness we passed legislation and you can now go to a restaurant and don't have to put up with smoke, Absolutely. but but do people come to you to try to quit smoking or? 
Yeah, so the Freedom From Smoking program, um, it's an eight week long program for those who would like to quit. Um, they actually would be quitting week four of the program, so it's not like you come day one and you're expected to quit. We assist you and help you with replacement therapy um, for the smoking. And how is this all paid for? Do they have to pay something to do this or is just you said it's totally open to the public? Yes, so all the programs are free to the community. Um, the Enhanced Fitness, currently, if you are not a member, it would have a $60 charge, but the other ones are completely free to anyone in the community, so you don't have to be a member. All right, if somebody wants to reach you or reach one of these programs, just give me an address, a phone number, website, or something. Okay. So if you want to reach out to us, um, our office building is located at 805 North French Street in Harrisburg. And then you can reach us via phone at 717-232-3113. Well, thank you for what you do and thank you for being here today. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'm at the Senior Expo with Frank Valvano, financial advisor, and Colleen Latchall. You're the senior branch office administrator for Edward Jones. Could you tell me what do seniors need to know about investing? Uh, I think the most important thing is that, uh, you know, that seniors are working with somebody that really understands the things that are, that are important to them, uh, their wants, their needs, their goals. Um, and that's going to partner through them without their life to make sure that they stay on track. All right. And um, tell me what you do at your office. Like, do people just walk in there? and ask you questions or do they you know, make plans to come there and set up an appointment? How does it work when somebody's just ready to get started and they're a senior? Well, mostly uh, anybody can walk in, they can call us. My job is to support Frank and our clients and to make it easy to be a client with Edward Jones. So we really uh, appreciate the people who come to us and we do try to do what is best for them. And I, I know that it's always best to start investing when you're young, but so many people don't for one reason or another. They have a family support and sometimes don't get it done. What, like, is there a cutoff age or when should somebody really, tell me when they should start and when they absolutely are kind of at the limit to when they can keep on investing? I think it's important to invest throughout, throughout your life. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, it really depends on, on the individual. And it really depends on the individual situation and, uh, you know, and, and, and what their goals are. I mean, that's the biggest thing. What, what, uh, what do you want to accomplish? Um, so, you know, I think it's, uh, it's important for everybody to invest, you know, throughout their life. And Colleen, do you set up investment plans for people? Like, say, like, put this much money in and then when you're so, you know, you'll get so much out of a certain point? Yes, Edward Jones has a system where we can put information into the system, look at what people have, and then give them advice on how to invest that money, look at what they may have saved in their retirement, and how that can work for them when they do retire. All right, well, we know investing is important. Like I said, no matter what age you are, it's important to do it. And uh, it's always nice to pass some money along to your kids or relatives or anyone. So do your plans provide for that also? Yes, we do. And we do work with lawyers that uh, do estate work and estate planning. All right. Well, thank you for what you do and for being here at our Senior Expo. Thank you. Thank you. Did you know that the Pennsylvania Farm Show's history goes all the way back to 1851? Originally organized as a state fair by the Pennsylvania Agricultural Society, it was discontinued in 1899. It wasn't until 1916 that Charles Patton, the Pennsylvania Secretary of Agriculture, worked with others to develop a new agricultural fair which debuted in January 1917. It was in 1925 that the roots were laid for the farm show that we know today. The show had grown so large that 40,000 attendees were traveling to various sites all around Harrisburg. During this year, the Pennsylvania State Department of Agriculture took control of the event and the legislature had decided to appropriate money that gave birth to the farm show complex. Finally, in 1931, the main exhibition building opened and welcomed 150,000 visitors to the show that year. 
Over the years, the farm show has continued to grow. Various events showcasing animals, products, and skills were added to the event. The farm show complex has also continued to grow, with more buildings and arenas being added over the years. The count stands at 24 acres inside 11 buildings and 3 arenas. Today, the show hosts approximately 6,000 animals, 10,000 competitive exhibits, and 300 commercial exhibits, along with over a half a million visitors. Since the doors to the main exhibition building opened, the Farm Show has become the world's biggest indoor agricultural event. Now you know. Did you know that Violet Oakley was the first female artist to receive a large commission for artwork done in a United States Capitol building? In 1902, Joseph Houston, designer and architect for the 3rd Harrisburg Capitol building, commissioned Violet Oakley to paint murals for the governor's reception room. He believed that Oakley's contribution would add interest to the building and act as an encouragement of women of the state. Prior to beginning her work for the Capitol, Oakley set out to England to conduct research for her murals. Upon return, she decided to center her artwork on William Penn and the founding of Pennsylvania. Oakley made sure that Penn's ideals of justice and peace could be seen throughout her work. In 1906, she completed 13 murals titled The Founding of the State of Liberty Spiritual and was placed in sequential order around the governor's reception room. These murals were some of the first to be installed in the Capitol. When Edwin Austin Abbey, another artist for the Capitol, died in 1911, Oakley was offered another opportunity to create murals for the unfinished Senate and Supreme Court chambers. Her work on the Senate murals, including International Understanding, was completed by 1919. Oakley then completed the Supreme Court murals, including the Divine Law, by 1927. Oakley is said to be the principal artist for the Capitol, with a total of 43 murals on display. She remains one of the greatest muralists in the United States. Now you know. Currently I'm with, and I'm gonna read the card, is Taylor Walls from Aftercare Coordinator, Hetrick Family Services, Inc. Funeral Pre-Planning Specialist. Like I know Bittner Family Funeral Homes pretty well, but I really don't know your side of it. So tell me and tell everybody listening exactly what you do and about pre-planning. Yeah, so you alluded to it. I handle all the pre-planning for our funeral homes. Um, we have four funeral homes. I meet with families on a daily basis, whether it's at their home, uh, a third-party location, or even at the funeral home itself. I sit down with them. I'm going to discuss their final wishes, what they would like in terms of their funeral arrangements, and we go from there. Well, tell me, does, everybody should have a will, I know that, but mm -hmm. do people do a will then come to see you or sometimes they come to you and they don't have a will and you have to talk to them about that? Yeah, there's there's definitely a, a, a high grouping of people who have a will that come to see us. It's not a requirement. Um, basically on our end, you're just pre-paying for all your services through the funeral home. It's great if you've started pre-planning maybe through the uh, cemetery where you have plots and things like that, but that's separate from us. You still have to pre-plan your funeral arrangements through a funeral home or a cremation society. So uh, those are the main items that we deal with. And um, like you said, with the wills, daily basis, people come in, some do and some don't. So now they pre-plan now and say they don't need the services for 20 years from now. Obviously nobody knows for sure, but do the prices that they plan now and put so much money down, does that price hold for 20 years or how does that work? Yeah, you alluded to it again. It locks in today's rates as soon as you meet with us and you fund your arrangements, that's the price you're gonna pay for the rest of your life. So let's hypothetically say you're paying for a $5,000 cremation today, that's all you're gonna pay, and maybe 10, 15 years ago, or 10, 15 years down the line, it's gonna be a $20,000 cremation, you only paid that $5,000. So it's one, it's one of the few industries where we can lock in our rates. You know, you're talking about cremation, and years ago it wasn't so popular, but it's becoming very popular what is the, is there a percentage that are turning towards cremation? Yeah, they're actually the national average based off of a study done in 2017 says that the cremation rate is now at 52% nationwide. Now, if you go out west, that rate is actually higher. It's probably 75, 80%. 
but it like all things they come west to east and we haven't really hit the 70 80 percent rate but it it's probably coming soon now i've noticed the different cemeteries they have like i call them a wall but there are four cremation whatever i don't know what you call them but is that becoming like I, they didn't used to be in cemeteries now i see them pop up so i guess every cemetery is probably trying to do that yeah, the, what you're talking about is what they call a columbarium. Um, one of the more popular ones is at Indian Town Gap National Cemetery. Where we do a lot of veterans burials and uh, when they get cremated, they have the option of either going into the ground, uh, having the urn buried, or the urn placed into this columbarium. It's becoming a lot more popular with the veterans and uh, Indian Town Gap is actually building a lot more of them. Now, having stopped in the funeral home, I know that you can also do things with the ashes like I've seen you can make rings or you can make lockets. Like, um, do people, a lot of people do that or is that just something real extravagant? Uh, it depends on the family. Obviously, there's a few families that are, they, they think it's odd that people do that, but it's, it's one of those things where if you're comfortable and you want to carry a piece of your mom or your dad and a, a locket on your neck, why not? Uh, we also handle thumbprint jewelry, so maybe you don't want to carry a piece of their ashes and you want a, th a thumbprint made into a um, a piece of jewelry, we could do that as well. Um, blown glass we've done. Nowadays, some people are even making diamond rings out of ashes. So there's all kinds of different things that they're capitalizing on in the cremation industry. Well, all that is good, and if somebody wants to get a hold of you, how do we do that? You can always visit our website, bittnercares.com. Um, we have all of our information there on all four of our funeral homes. It's kind of the landing page to each individual funeral home from there. You can find our, uh, our phone number, you can contact us by email, whatever you prefer. Well, thank you, thank you for what you do. I know it's, you're definitely a service to people, a service a lot of us don't wanna participate in, but we know it's important that we do. So thank you for doing that and also for being at Expo. I know your company is always here and we appreciate that. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. All right, I'm now with the Hospice of Central Pennsylvania. Two ladies here has been talking to people all morning and we're going to have you talk and tell me your name and tell me what you do. I'm Jeannie McClinic, and I'm a certified hospice and palliative care nurse for Hospice of Central PA, but I am the community health educator. So I talk to people, help them understand what palliative care is and what hospice is. Do you want to tell us the difference? Oh, I'll, I'll try to make it as brief as I can. Palliative care is not hospice. It's for the treatment of individuals with chronic illnesses where they have a lot of different uh, physicians involved in their care. Example would be congestive heart failure where uh, they're declining, they're having symptom issues, um, and they need somebody to oversee and manage that care. It doesn't take away from the other physicians. It would be like a, a physician referral to help them manage their care. The difference is they focus on not just the physical, but the emotional and spiritual needs of both the patient and the caregiver. And that's what sets it apart. Which is so important. Oh, it sure is. Especially it to really older is. people. Oh, yes. yes. And tell me your name. Hi, my name is Lee Kemper, and I am an account manager for Hospice of Central PA. And my job basically is to go and visit facilities, hospitals, nursing homes, doctor's offices, and I assist the admission nurses in uh, getting information to patients that are requesting hospice services or palliative care services. So that's my main function. Now, does a doctor recommend these people to come to you, or how do they come to you? Like, what promotes them to be there? Um, a doctor will recommend hospice. It starts their re a referral, what we consider a referral. And it's up to the, to the patient themselves of who they want to go to. In central Pennsylvania, there's 22 hospice uh, providers. And hospice of central Pennsylvania happens to be the oldest hospice. We're 40 years old this April, which will be our Ruby anniversary. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's really a patient preference. So that's how it all gets started. So then if they refer to us, the doctor will then give us a referral and that's how it comes to Hospice of Central PA. And I'm sure you have family referrals, someone was at your facility oh, and, and they talk about it and then they come to see you. Right, and we're fortunate that we have Carolyn's House, which is located on Linglestown Road, which is a, the only hospice residence in the area where we can meet the needs of the dying patient and family in a really home-like setting. And 
That's what's the name of this Carol? It's more than Carolyn's house. It is Car yes. We shortened it because okay. it used to be the Carolyn Cruxton Slane residence. It is now Carolyn's house. Yes. Well, that's a nice place. I know I drive by there often. Oh, a lot of people do because it's right off of Lingle's Town Road. But um, yeah. So, well, tell me what else, like, um, you know, what sets you apart from the other ones since there's oh, so many? That's easy. We're mission driven. We really are highest quality of care for patients at end of life. But what sets us apart is our community outreach. Um, I facilitate three uh, support groups for caregivers. They are not affiliated with hospice necessarily or palliative care, they're community um, a caregiver coffee breaks, I call them. Uh, our bereavement supports are open to the community. Uh, we have a wonderful veteran program, a We Honor Veteran program that really focuses on the needs of veterans at end of life. And the other thing we have is Camp Dragonfly, which is we're going into our, I think our 21st year to offer, uh, it's a camp for children who are grieving between the ages of six and 15. Uh, it's at Camp Hebron and Camp um, Swatera in Bethel. And there are kids who are grieving and we get the referrals from the school districts. See, that's something like I always say, I learn things here. I didn't even know that. And I'm very familiar with Camp Hebron. It's a yeah. wonderful place. Oh, it is, it is. But we, yeah, and I've been involved in it for 17 years. So uh, it's wonderful. We really help children a lot. Well, thank you. Thank you for what you do and for being here. I know oh, you're always so nice to the people. Us. So thank you. Thank you. Mug and Cheeks gift card from Hospice of Central Pennsylvania to Janet Lee Oxenford. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a enjoyable time watching the event here today at my Senior Expo. If you have any questions for me, uh, please call the district office. And very shortly, my information will be on the screen. Again, I'm Representative Sue Helm, the 104th Legislative District, which is part of Dauphin and part of Lebanon County. Thank you.